All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Way Podcast, where we talk about Yahweh and how to live life this way. My name is Victoria. I'm so happy to be here with y'all today. I lost my voice, which is why you're not getting super peppy, Victoria, because I can't squeal and speak all loud because my voice is not here. And my voice has never been gone for this long. I lost it last Saturday. It is, yeah, it's Thursday night. So please excuse just my voice, y'all. But, you know, we got to keep grinding, you know. The devil ain't going to take me out. Kind of get amen. All right. Before we get into this, today's episode, please like and subscribe on YouTube. Leave me five stars on the podcasting platforms you're listening on. And let's get right into it. So today is going to be a short episode, I think. I don't know. It depends on the questions. But we're doing a and a And honestly, I need to do these more. I truly feel like this makes me feel like a community. I'm like talking to y'all. Your questions are in here. And I did this low key last summer, I think, where people would submit via email. In the future, we might get back or might have episodes getting back to that. But yeah, so we're just doing a Q&A. I put a question box on my personal and on my podcast page. And yeah, y'all submitted some questions and we'll try to get to most of them. There's some fun ones in there, some deeper ones, but I'm so excited. I feel like I'm talking to y'all, like we're on the phone. So sweetie. Okay, let's get to the first question. I'm so sorry about my voice, y'all. It sounds so bad. Um, <clears throat> okay, okay, let's answer this one. This is the first question I got. How did you get to be a part of the LO team? So I know some of y'all were expecting an, a Live Original retreat recap in this podcast episode, but that's next week. Me and Adore are going to film that when I get back in town. I'm also going out of town. Uh, and not tomorrow, but the day after for Mother's Day. And anyways, we're going to film when I get back to town. The Live Original retreat recap. Also, I forgot to apologize for my looks. I literally just walked in the house from pickleball. So we're sweaty and gross, but I tried to put on some mascara. Anyways, I played so bad at pickleball tonight too as well. That's a side note. But anyways, but we're getting this episode in. I'm like, no, we're not going to bed right now. We are going to film this podcast episode. We're doing it. So how did I get to be a part of the LO team, which is Live Original, which is Sadie Robertson's ministry, uh, Sadie Rob Huff and... For the longest time, y'all, I genuinely did not know. I'm like, I don't know how these people found me. So they DM'd me on Instagram last year at the beginning of the year and asked me to be a part of this team uh, of, a, of of ambassadors. And I love, knew and loved Sadie before this. I, I knew of her ministry, didn't really know much, but knew of it and uh, prayed about it. And I'm like, absolutely sign me up. What do you freaking mean? And so for the past year of being a part of this team, I literally didn't even know like how I how I became or how they found me. I thought maybe something went viral when they found I, I literally did not know. But turns out that I had an old friend. Well, she's not an old friend. She's actually a like friend now. But I'm saying like when she was a part of LO years ago, she suggested me as an ambassador because I guess they were looking for like more ambassadors and she put my name in there and they found me and I guess liked me and asked me to be a part. So really it was a friend who put in the word for me. That's how I got it. I did not know that. I literally actually just found that out like two, three months ago and it was a mystery to me, but that's how I became a part of LO and honestly like could kiss my friend every time I think about her putting a word in for me because this was nothing I was asking for it was truly the Holy Spirit y'all I'm telling y'all it was the Holy Spirit and uh it's just been the biggest blessing and so shout out to Ivana I love her so much we actually mentioned her a few episodes back with we had on her brand her um all the more apparel but yeah that's how I got in and Adore, my roommate's also in there, and she still to this day has no idea how she got in. And uh there is like a way to apply. I don't know like where they post that stuff though. And I and I don't know, I couldn't tell you like where to apply, but somewhere somehow you can apply and they might get pick you. I don't know, y'all. 
it's just literally the best. I, I love LO. I love LO. I love it so freaking much. Okay, next question. How do you deal with doubt? Let's answer this question. <sighs> That's a great question. How do you deal with doubt? I would say you got to look back. And I know that is a Christian cliche answer, but it's so very true because we are very forgetful humans. This is why the Bible says we are sheep, some of the most forgetful animals on this planet Earth. And we are very forgetful humans. And so a lot of times God blesses us with <clears throat> things and we rejoice in the moment and maybe a few days after maybe a week after and we forget and then we're already on to the next thing like okay god thanks for this but now can, you, can i get this and then god might not answer as fast and then you start doubting god it's, it's literally a cycle y'all and so i think also how to deal with doubt a heart of gratitude just be in thankfulness like all the time. Thank God for the breath in your lungs. Thank God for your able body. Thank, just thank him for literally everything. Just thank him. Thank him. That's a great way to combat it as well. I, the one thing that has been really changing my heart the past few weeks in my quiet time is starting the quiet time off with gratitude and repentance. And just like, God, I'm sorry for this. Like, I'm like, I don't know why that helps, but it just helps. It's almost like cleansing your heart out. And so honestly, apologize to God for forgetfulness and ask him to help you not forget. Ask him for a better memory, but look back on all the things that God has done for you. And that right there alone could, can take away your doubt. Also, community is very important. Look at the people around you. See how God has worked there. And it, it can increase your faith. Like literally the faith of others can increase your faith. And so, yeah, I would say those are the two things. Look up and look around at your community. Um, don't forget, y'all. Always remember everything God has done for you. And I know it's been so much. God is so good. He's so good. And so truly just remember that's my number one piece of advice. Okay, this one says, how did you strengthen your spiritual gifts from God? This is a great question. And me trying to like think about what my spiritual gifts even are. Okay, I think that one thing that has helped me tremendously is my mentor. Shout out Chrissy. God sent her to me in a, in a wrapped with a bow. This lady, first of all, she prayed gift things into me. She molded gift things into me. She has done so much. I literally was on the phone with her like two days, two, three days ago because we still pray occasionally because that's how we practice our gift things. But she now, there is a difference between like having prophetic gift things and being a prophet. My mentor is a literal prophet, a direct line from heaven to earth. God speaks through her. Like, it's actually crazy. Like, I, it's so thick. Her prophetic gifting is so thick that I will literally be like, Chrissy, ask God this. Like, and she'll sit for a moment. She'll let it download in her spirit. And she will literally speak on behalf of God. Like, I'm not kidding you. That is how powerful. Well, she's not powerful. That is how, what's the word I'm looking for? Amazing her giftings are that God has given her. And so I, I have like a prophetic gifting, like you'll see on my TikTok, I, and it's on some podcast episodes as well. I have uploaded, like, I feel like the Lord is telling me this and it's for the masses. He said da 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 da. But my mentor has helped me hone in on that gift so much. Like we will literally call and we would pray together. Like literally we did this three days ago. We would sit and she'd be like, Toria, like, what do you feel like you're getting? And let's pray for this. And I'm like, okay, let's pray for this. And so we're praying back and forth and we're telling each other, like, this is what the Holy spirit is saying right now about this particular thing that we're praying for. And so my mentor like helps me practice it. I don't even know how else to put it. Like we literally practice, but we practice through prayer. 
and we just pray back and forth. And it's so crazy because God will give us a specific word for something and then we'll see it come to pass like the next week. And it's just actually insane. And so I, my mentor and prayer has been the two things that has helped me with my spiritual gifts so much. Now the spiritual gift of like teaching and leading and stuff like this has literally been, I honestly feel like it's from the word, like spending time with God, learning his word, learning his voice. I feel like all of this that you see is just a byproduct of the time I spend with God, what I've learned in his word, what his spirit equips me. Like, it's just, honestly, I really do feel like it's spending time with God. Also that helps your giftings. Um, and I think it's very important too, for your community and people around you to also call out those giftings in you, you know, like a lot of times we did this in my, my group, I disciple a group of young women at my church. We literally did this in our group, like called out gifts. We see and like, you have to get the hospitality. I see the gift of leadership in you. I see the gift of teaching in you. I see the gift of wisdom in you. I see the gift of mercy in you. Like literally went around the group and called out each other's good things. And a lot of the people in the group didn't even know, see that gifting in them. And so that's another thing. Like ask people around you, like, what do you see? Like, out of the spiritual giftings, it's in First Corinthians chapter 14, I think, what good things do you see in me? And ask God, like, to help you discernment. That is a huge one between me and my mentor. She has the best discernment I have ever seen in my entire life. Let me tell you all this, actually. So the other morning we were praying, and I can't give too much away, but basically we were praying over something, and I asked Chrissy, Oh yeah. I was trying to say names, but yeah, Chrissy, my mentor, I asked Chrissy to pray over this particular person that she does not know, but I do know. And I'm trying to be careful with my words, but basically there was so much that I already knew that I did not tell her specifically because I wanted to, I wanted her to pray for this person and see like what she got in the spirit and everything she got in the spirit was, was just her discernment was just on point. I literally cannot describe it any other way. Like her discernment was just incredible on this person and everything she was saying, like she was reading this person's mail and I just knew it because I know this person. But anyways, um, discernment is a, is another huge one that me and my mentor have as well. And I don't know. It's just, oh, and, and Lila was on the discernment episode as well. Uh, Lila has incredible discernment and I don't know. I really do feel like honing in your spiritual gifts and making them better is spending time with God. But I do think when you find people who are walking in that gifting as well could do wonders, sit down together and pray, seek the Holy spirit and just exercise those gifts with people. If you have the gift of serving, go serve at your church. Like literally just exercise them. That's the advice. Sorry, that was so long winded. Let's answer some lighthearted ones. Goals for the summer. Honestly, I don't really have many goals for the summer. I just feel like right now, God, there's a lot of things I felt like, particularly in the past few weeks, I feel like God has spoken to me and that are coming and are coming to pass. And again, go back to my episode, sailboat. I'm just being a sailboat, y'all. Wherever God takes me, wherever we sail together, that's where we're gonna go. I don't really have any like hardcore goals to call out, if that makes sense. I'm really just chilling, but I'm really also really like in my calling as well, but chilling in the calling with God. <laughs> And so we're just going to keep doing what we're doing and see where the Lord leads. That's truly my heart posture right now, which is so unlike me because I am such a goal oriented person, but I just don't feel the need to make goals right now. And if we feel that need change, we will do that. I'm actually like low key running out of time. I thought I would be able to answer most of these, but um, the bear versus man thing that's trending. I literally have no idea what that is. Based on your struggles, journey, etc., what character in the Bible would you be? I've said this before. Paul. I actually cannot wait to meet Paul when I get to heaven. 
but for sure him. I relate to Paul so much. I feel like his personality and my personality are very similar. I feel like his boldness is something that God has given him, but also that's a gift that God has put inside of me. I feel like this is one thing I always say when Paul was out of Christianity and did not follow God, he was out, out. And then God reeled him in and brought him in. <clears throat> and when he was in, he was in. And that is my journey, y'all. Like when I was out away from God, I was out, out. And when God reeled me in, he reeled me in, all the way in, never looked back, just like Paul. And so I do think Paul is the most similar character in the Bible to me. And I can't wait to meet him because I feel like he's low-key my brother in Christ. What's your favorite color? My favorite color is yellow. Um, I feel like that represents my life. I love life. I love, I feel like yellow represents sunshine and fun and joy. And I just feel that I literally was just driving home, like thinking about my friends from pickleball and just my life. Cause I went on this retreat this weekend and I'm like, I love my life. Like I love my life. I literally was just saying that in the car. And I think yellow represents that it's just sunshine. I just feel that. Um, so that's my favorite color, but, but, funny though I don't actually wear yellow I don't own anything yellow I only wear neutrals like exhibit a I have on a black t-shirt black shorts and usually I'll wear like my my beige hat with this but it's not on tonight but yeah I only wear neutrals but my favorite color yellow this one says any dates recently lol uh let's go to uh I'm gonna do two more and then we might be at time how do you realistically put on the armor of God? So a mentor was actually just talking about this the other day, but it's really nothing crazy. Like just pray Ephesians six. God, I declare Ephesians six over me today. God, I declare, go, go read Ephesians six, go meditate on Ephesians six, but literally pray it over yourself. I am praying Ephesians 6 over me. God loves when we pray scripture. Um, one scripture I've been praying recently is 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 7 or 9. No, no, no. Chapter 3, verse 9. And it says, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. And I have been praying that over my quiet times every morning because I want God to know I am here. And I am your servant. So speak like I hear your voice speak. And so that's a scripture I've been praying a lot uh, recently. But what was even the question? Oh, literally go read Ephesians 6 and declare it. Say it out loud. Like I'm declaring Ephesians 6 over my body. I have on the full armor of God. I pray for the full armor of God over me today. I pray for the sword of the spirit. I pray for the breastplate of righteousness. Like literally all you have to do is pray it and it will like be over you you know it's really nothing like profound but just pray how do you realistically put on the armor of god i also feel like too like the breast breastplate of righteousness i really do feel like that also goes with living a righteous life like you can't be like i put on the breastplate of righteousness this morning and then walk out and cussing out your neighbor you know what i'm saying or i don't know spewing hate towards people or getting drunk or whatever you want to put in that thing. You can't like say that and then go do that, you know? Um, and then like, what is it? The sword of truth or was it the sword of the spirit or the sword? Something about the word is the sword, like equip yourself with the word of God. So that can activate, you know, like you really do have scripture written on your heart. That's part of putting on the armor. Um, and so, yeah, but pray it over yourself ultimately, but also make sure you're walking in it, not just talking the talk. Okay, this is an interesting one. And I asked the Holy Spirit for help before I even hit record. This one says, can someone be resaved or is salvation lost forever? So 100% someone can be 
resaved. But the thing is, is I don't think. Let, look, this is where my head is going. I'm, I'm, I'm LOLing. My head immediately goes to if I was God, <laughs> and someone denounced their faith. Like there is this actually pause side tangent. There is this one Christian guy that I knew that denounced his faith and now literally has a ministry of deconstructing. So every why he doesn't believe anymore in Jesus anymore. What, why he thinks Christianity is wrong. Like he literally went from one extreme to the other, kind of like a Paul, but the opposite way he went all in and now he's all out and is trying to bring other people down with him. Anyways, if I was God, I would be like, well, you denounced me. So like the part for me, I never knew you, you know what I'm saying? But it's crazy because at one part, at one point he did know him when he was like a huge Christian. And so I truly don't know. That is one question that is really going to have to be at the pearly gates of heaven because I don't know. But can you be resaved? Absolutely. You can always get resaved. Jesus is always waiting for you to come back like the prodigal son. Go read that in the Bible. He's waiting for you to run to him. His arms are always open. Yes, you can be resaved. Yes, you can rededicate your life to Jesus. Yes, you can go running in his arms anytime you want. Jesus is just waiting for us. He, he's literally just waiting. And so to answer your question, yes. And if this is your situation, please go back to God. Please be resaved. Please rededicate your life to him because God is literally waiting for you. And yeah, we'll end there. Uh, this was fun. Sorry, I'm not more peppy. I just literally like a big part of my pep is my voice. And she's down she's down and raspy <clears throat> and so I can't bring that pet but I'm also really tired from pickleball I'm not even gonna lie but this is fun I'm sorry I couldn't be more fun but we cranked this baby out and hopefully in the next few days when I film my next episode my voice is back and I don't sound like this I sound so bad oh some of y'all are probably asking well Victoria how did you lose your voice I went to Louisiana this past weekend we were outside for 30 minutes during a workout and that took my voice away. I think it was the pollen in Louisiana. I've been jokingly saying that the Louisiana pollen is poison, but that's what took it. Literally wiped my voice clean. It's, this is actually the best it sounded all week, but yeah, y'all, that's where my voice went. I'm sad. I miss my voice. And that's why I'm saying I rebuke you, Satan, because God literally uses my voice for him. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, y'all, we'll do a QA and a once, probably once every quarter just to catch up with y'all and just to see if there's anything y'all want to chat about. But that's the end of this episode. And I will talk to y'all next week. Like and subscribe. Give me five stars on the podcasting platform. And when is this going out? Next Wednesday? I was about to say Happy Mother's Day. But, I mean, if any mothers are watching, Happy Mother's Day, even though it's a few days past. I hope you had a great Mother's Day uh, and a great May, and I will talk to y'all next week. Bye.